right now you're looking at the front of a Porsche Cayenne. And unless you happen to be the bloke who designed the thing, you might be wondering, is that the new one or is that the old one? Now have a look at the rear. Yeah, it's the new one, the all new Porsche Cayenne. You can tell, can't you, by that strip, that really sharp strip that they've got running across the rear that this is the brand new car, the third generation Cayenne. And in fact, it's much more different to the previous car than the front end styling would suggest. It is all new. The structure is now a hybrid mix of alloy and steel, so it's a bit lighter than before. We're not messing about today. This is the KN Turbo, the really fast one. Power is up by 30 horsepower to 550, but the engine is now four liters rather than a 4.8. That's downsizing in action. And so the turbo is mounted within the V, they call it a hot V. It makes a huge amount of difference. I'll come back to that a little bit later on. So we've still got an eight speed automatic gearbox. It's not a twin clutch. It's still got four wheel drive system. We've still got super trick Porsche stability management. There's all sorts of new tech on this car. But before I start describing what it does to the driving experience, let's park up and let's have a little poke around this cabin because there's a lot going on with this new interior. All new inside the cabin, of course. It kind of looks familiar from the previous Cayenne, but it is all new in here. And I have to say, the quality is really, really good. The material quality, the build quality, it just feels solid in here. All based around this massive central screen here now, which is huge, kind of the size of a loaf of bread. And all the graphics are beautifully rendered. And we've got the navigation screen up. The map is enormous. And then right in front of me in the instrument binnacle, front and center, we've got the rev counter. That's typical Porsche fare. That's what they always do. And then to the right, I've got another digital screen, the size of a typical navigation screen. And I can have my map up there. I can have all sorts of car info. Yeah, that works really, really nicely. The steering wheel, where I want it, reaches all the way out to me. It's a good seating position, lofty with a good view forwards. Yeah, it's a really cool cabin, this. And then, in the menu system here, we can look at all the off-road settings, so gravel, mud, sand, rocks. It should be able to get through some pretty tough terrain, I think, this car. But let's find out how it actually drives on a proper winding country road. Now, the car's really, really good on a motorway, on a long journey. I've already driven it on that kind of road, and it's comfortable, it's refined. In town, apart from the size of the thing, it's really easy to drive. So we're up on this country road up in the Scottish borders to find out if the thing's actually entertaining to drive. I mean, it's a hugely powerful Porsche Turbo. It's got to be fun to drive, isn't it? So this car's got a couple of optional extras that really make a big difference to the driving experience. The first one is rear wheel steering. That makes the car more agile at low speed, more maneuverable, you have to use less steering lock and then it makes the car more stable at higher speeds. This car also has an active roll stabilization system. Now the previous Cayenne did as well, Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control, but that was a hydraulic based system. This is a new electric based system built around this very powerful 48 volt electrical ar architecture that this car now uses. That means it's much more responsive, much more immediate and therefore more effective. I have to say, it makes all the difference. The problem with these huge, high-riding, heavy SUVs is that they naturally roll a lot. And so you've got two options. You can either fight that roll with an anti-roll bar the size of your arm and stop it from leaning, but then you knacker the ride quality. Or you fit one of these very clever electric roll stabilization systems, which is what this car has. The impression you get when you drive along a winding road is that the body is actually staying really, really flat. It's kind of a spooky sensation in a car that sits so high that you expect will be rolling around all over the place. So what they've done is decouple that roll stabilization from the ride quality. So we've got a flat bodied vehicle and we've got a really, really good ride. And I mean a really good ride. So I'm in the softest damper setting at the moment and it's really plush, it's really pliant. It's not a stiff, hard riding, jagged kind of thing. It's really fluid. That's really, really impressive. I have to say that is probably the biggest improvement they've made to this car over the previous one. 
the car's on three chamber air springs, which is where that plush ride comes from. It's also got Porsche Torque Vectoring Plus, and to get the most out of that system, it uses mixed tyres front and rear, wider on the rear axle than the front. On this particular car, those tyres are Pirelli P0s, performance biased road tyres. This car has lots of proper off-roading hardware. It's got diff locks and adjustable ride height and various terrain settings. That means it's got some pretty good off-roading capability, but of course, away from the road, it's completely compromised by the tyres it's on. These super high performance SUVs are kind of fundamentally at odds with themselves because if you want them to be sharp and agile on the road, you need high performance tyres. If you want them to be good off-road, you need to put on completely different tyres and that knackers its performance on the road. So the tyres that this car's got on, they're not going to drag you through mud or even across wet fields. What they do do is make this car freakishly agile and fast along a road. It's 2.2 tonnes, so it's still a big, hefty, chunky thing. Massive ride height, of course. And the only reason they've been able to make this thing as agile and actually as entertaining to drive is because they've got all these systems, the roll stabilisation, the rear wheel steering, the torque vectoring. This car's just loaded with hardware. And all that hardware is trying to do is overcome the size and the weight of the thing. Of course, even with all that hardware doing its thing, the KN Turbo never feels as agile or as locked down or as nimble as a proper sports car. But what you do have is precision. You've got massive body control, good grip, even in these wet conditions. The roads are quite slippery, but we've still got good grip. And that is where its massive point-to-point -point pace on a road comes from. You could frighten some properly quick hot hatches in this car, I think. What we don't have is any sort of steering feel. I mean, that's probably expecting too much for a car like this, isn't it? So on a day like this, where the roads are a bit greasy, you, you are just guessing how much grip there is. There's no intuitive sense of how much grip you have, which is, I suppose that's completely fair enough. But what you can do is place the car exactly where you want it. There's no play in the steering and it's super direct and precise. So you can put the car exactly where you want it, which really helps you get along the road really quickly. Talking of going really quickly, this new engine, four litre twin turbo V8, 550 horsepower, 568 pound foot of torque. We've got second gear, and you're about to watch the cameraman fly towards the back of the car. Yes, that's big, big performance. <laughs> it's, it's a very, very heavy car but 550 horsepower and 568 pound-foot of torque shunts it along the road really, really quickly. It's got proper Porsche turbo thumping performance. And this new engine is very, very impressive. I think it's lost some of the kind of thunderous V8 soundtrack that we had with the old 4.8 litre engine. But what we do now have is freakishly sharp throttle response, almost no turbo lag. If you didn't know better, you might even believe that this was a normally aspirated, very high capacity engine. It's seriously good. It isn't as thrilling or as engaging to drive as a proper sports car or even a sports saloon, but I can forgive it that. It's a huge, high riding, heavy SUV. And the fact that it's as capable as it is along a twisting road is massively impressive. It costs a whisker under a hundred thousand pounds. So it's big, big money. And then of course this car's got ceramic brakes, it's got rear wheel steering, it's got the roll stabilisation system, so you're looking at 120 to 130,000 pounds. Big, big money. But I have to say, it's an incredibly impressive package.